Joe, Joe, what the hell are you doing? Yu Suzuki, he said, if I use the iron palm of Tai Chi on this tree enough to cover the ground in leaves, that's when Shemi 3 will come out. And I believe him. I have no idea where to begin. Shenmue 1 and 2 are probably two of my favourite games ever made. I've been playing both games for years, pretty much since release. A yearly ritual of starting at disc 1 of Shenmue and playing through to the end of Shenmue 2's fourth disc and then playing the waiting game until Shenmue 3 gets released. I know these games inside out. Or at least, I thought I did. The great thing about re-releases of older games is it's a chance to start fresh like a new player. No powered up save files to rely on. Playing Shemu on PS4 is a wonder, an eye opening glimpse into a world where every minute detail is fully rendered, waiting to be perused, poked, and prodded by Ryo Hazuki's giant veiny hands. I don't think I've opened every drawer in the Hazuki household since the first time I played Shemu almost 20 years ago, but playing again on PS4, I couldn't help myself. Shemu and its sequel are special. While most open world games give you the tools and freedom to destroy them, Shenmue's Yokosuka and Shenmue 2's Hong Kong ask you to just exist as a teenager. Well, a teenager with a murdered father to avenge and a proficiency in martial arts, and his own dojo to practice in. Handy that. The plot of Shenmue is ridiculous and intriguing and majestic and mundane all at once. Ryo's father is murdered by Lan Di, so he embarks on a quest that will take him to Hong Kong and mainland China to get his revenge, but not before asking every inhabitant if they've seen guys in black suits, or a guy with a tattoo, or, yes, any sailors in the area. It's easy to mock Shenmue, but only if you're a prick. It's a game that asks you to find the fun in just wandering about and distracting yourself between the big story beats, which are poorly voiced from an extremely cheesy script. Shenmue 1 also has a lot of waiting about in it. I don't mind finding an empty car park and practicing martial arts moves to pass the time, but you might. It's safe to say there's a lot of nothing happening in Shenmue 1. The Virtua Fighter based combat is barely seen until the third act of the game, and at a high level barely anything happens in the plot. Ryo discovers Lan Di has left for Hong Kong, so he gets in a boat and then the credits roll. But that ignores all the wonderful little moments of emotional connection you'll make with the first game's world and characters. Yokosuka is a small town where everyone knows Ryo's name. Witnessing Ryo's distance from his pals and the potential love of his life is heartbreaking. Meanwhile, there are hints of something fantastical and mythical lurking just beneath the sober, bleak reality of Shenmue's world. Twenty years later, I'm still dying to find out what the dragon and phoenix mirrors are all about. Shenmue 2 fixes any problems Shenmue 1 might have had. Time can be skipped to avoid waiting about. Almost every single inhabitant of Hong Kong can lead you right to where you want to go so you'll never be lost. And the cities you visit are huge compared to Yokosuka. Shenmue 1's air of bleakness is also gone from Shenmue 2. The first game is a complete downer. Every facet, from the soundtrack to the moss-covered alleyways, is bleak and miserable. And while I love that, Shenmue 2 is a roller coaster ride in comparison. It's full of chases, fights, and every kung fu movie cliche imaginable, including not one, but two wise masters using trees to teach lessons in martial arts prowess and general morality, and a dizzying chase to the top of a bamboo scaffold that inevitably topples down. So yes, Shenmue 1 and 2 are amazing, incredible games. Before you get too excited though, there's something you need to be aware of. This re-release, or at least the PS4 version I've been playing, is a bit of a disappointment. 
The image is weirdly dark and the in-game contrast slider doesn't really help that much. There are sound glitches everywhere and sometimes cutscenes just don't play properly with the camera just sitting there looking at a bush. Sega know that there are issues and have said that there will be a patch. Hopefully it will come soon because a lot of these issues leave a bad impression. The worst issue though, and one that Sega didn't actually list in the incoming fixes document that we got along with our review copy of the game, is Shenmue 2's soundtrack. There are easily fixable sound glitches throughout both games, but Shenmue 2's beautiful soundtrack specifically sounds extremely bad in this re-release and it's going to be a hell of a job to fix it. Notes are sustained to the point that everything sounds out of tune and entire instruments are completely off key. The moment in Shenmue 2 where Zhu Ying lets you stay at her apartment for the first time is somewhat ruined by the gorgeous serene melody that plays, sounding instead like a melodica cover. Look, in this day and age, games get patches. It's just an inevitability now. So I'm going to give Sega the benefit of the doubt when they say that they're aware of the issues and are making a fix. I just thought that I'd make you all aware of how I feel and how the game plays right now. Keep playing though, through the glitches and the terrible music and you might end up entranced by the magic of Shenmue. As I've said, it's a special game. One that feels like a proper living world that you get to experience as a real person. There are entire blocks of flats with endless mazes of doors and rooms that are just there to reinforce that the world of Shenmue exists in the background with or without Ryo being there. Almost 20 years on and in a post uncharted age, Shenmue still delivers the big set piece thrills that have come to define modern games too. Huge scale kung fu fights, market stall brawls, the chase where Ryo is handcuffed to Ren still sticks in my memory as one of the coolest sequences that I've ever played. The magic of Shenmue is something intangible and unique, and the issues with this port aren't enough to ruin the spell completely. I don't think I call this version the definitive version, at least not until the issues are fixed. However, there's something undeniably great about playing both of these wonderful games in widescreen, and with no frame rate dips and loading times so short they're barely noticeable. On Dreamcast, I'd avoid going indoors so I didn't have to sit through a loading screen, but now I'll happily go round to the pizzeria just to say hi to Bobby as he bakes his delicious pizzas. You'll say, oh, you'll discover. If you've never played Shemmy before and you want to play something truly different from all the other third person open world action games, then Shemmy 1 and 2 is essential. If, like me, you've played them to death but feel the urge to revisit them, then it's worth picking them up too. Just be aware that right now, while the core games might be incredible experiences, there are some glitches and issues that were never part of the original games. They might annoy you from time to time, but if you're like me, they won't stop Shenmue from being an unforgettable experience.